Good, happy Saturday evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Saturday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Saturday evening, so let's begin. First step, COVID-19 in New Hampshire. Let's take a look. Fifty-five number of people in New Hampshire who have tested positive for COVID-19. 258,419 number of people worldwide who have tested positive. Two number of people hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 216 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And 11,000 277 number of deaths worldwide from COVID-19. And one person in Coas have it, 12 in Grafton, 5 in Carroll, 3 in Belmont, 3 in Merrimack, 10 in Hillsborough, 1 in Chester, and 20 in Rockingham. Common symptoms are fever, cough, and difficult spread difficult breathing, how it spreads, and prevention tips. Coronavirus live update. Pence and wife get tested. 793 more deaths in Italy. There are now more than 284,000 cases globally. As the number of confirmed novel coronavirus cases increase, some states are acting quickly by ordering vaccine versions of stay-at-home orders for residents. Oregon issued such an order on Friday night joining States that include California, Illinois, and New York. The respiratory virus, known officially as COVID-19, has reached every continent except Antarctica and every state in America since emerging in the Chinese city of Yuan in December. Globally, there are at least 299,061 diagnosed cases, that leaves 12,755 coronavirus-related deaths, according to data compiled by the Center for System Science and Engineering at John Hopkins University. More than 91,000 people have recovered worldwide. The United States at least 23,480 diagnosed cases have been confirmed, and at least 285 people have died. So far, at least 147 have recovered. Today's biggest development. Italy reports 793 more deaths. Economic sentiment may exceed 2 trillion, up from 1 trillion. 600 million respiratory masks and respirator ordered. New York declares major disaster and more countries on lockdown. New Hampshire Senator's spouse test positive for coronavirus. Martha Fuller Clark and her husband have been in self-isolation since March 17th. New Hampshire Senator Martha Fuller-Clark announced Saturday that her spouse has tested positive for COVID-19. Fuller-Clark has not yet experienced any symptoms of the virus herself, according to 
Sarah, the state senator's policy and communication director. People who were in close contact with the senator between March 7th to the 15th are advised to follow state guidelines for at least 14 days to protect themselves and others. Fuller Clark urged people to stay home, saying it is better to protect than receive reactive. Coronavirus in Massachusetts, Saturday, March 21st. Update. And here's that new update. 112 new cases. Total cases, 525. Test completed 5k plus coronavirus in Maine what you need to know let's take a listen to that video from WMTW News 8 Maine I got to hold him for about five minutes. Emergency legislation that Governor Mills has signed will put $73 million toward combating the coronavirus outbreak. And I am pleased to sign this on March 18th. The bill is made up of several items. One of the biggest is expanding unemployment insurance benefits to include workers in quarantine. The governor also switched her tone from recommending bars and restaurants to close to prohibiting dine-in for two weeks starting this evening. I do not take these steps lightly. Maine's businesses and their workers are the backbone of our economy. She encourages people to continue to support local business through the purchase of takeout and keep up with social distancing. It's on my mind every day. <laughs> it's on everybody's minds. Uh, and we have to take it day to day, see how long this is going to be before we flatten that curve, save people's lives first and foremost. The governor also prohibits gatherings of more than 10 people for social reasons, excluding instances where people are not able to work remotely. Of the positive cases, four people are hospitalized, and one of the first people to test positive for the virus has now recovered. In Augusta, I'm Talia Clark for WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. North Carolina Senator asked for ethics committee review over his stock sell off. Let's take a listen to that video from Good Morning America. Burr is asking for an ethics committee review over his stock sell-off following a briefing on coronavirus weeks before the stock market began to plummet. ABC's Rachel Scott has more from Washington. This morning, with mounting anxiety on Wall Street, at least two senators are being asked to explain why they sold off their stocks after classified coronavirus briefings before the outbreak. Senator Richard Burr defended the move. In a statement, he says he relied solely on public news reports to guide his decision, personally calling on the Senate Ethics Committee to investigate. But before the market tumbled, Burr and other members of the Senate were told in a February briefing about the potential impact of the crisis to come. A day after, Burr sold up to $1.7 million in stock, including shares in the travel and hotel industry. Weeks later, at a private event, he sounded the alarm. This audio obtained by NPR. It is much more aggressive in this transition than anything that we have seen in recent history. But just last month, in an op-ed, Burr expressed confidence in the United States, writing the country is better prepared than ever before to face emerging public health threats like the coronavirus. Now he is facing calls to resign, and he is not the only one under fire. Senators Dianne Feinstein and James Inhofe also criticized for selling holdings before the market took a nosedive. But Senator Kelly Leffler, whose husband chairs the New York Stock Exchange, tweeted about attending a coronavirus briefing in January. 
and on the same day, she sold more than a million dollars in shares. I'm not involved in the decisions around buying and selling. No longer do my husband and I have the ability to do discretionary trades, and that's why it's uh, outsourced to third-party investment managers. While Senator Richard Byrd does deny any wrongdoing, he says he understands how this may appear to some, which is why he is calling on that ethics investigation. Now, lawmakers are required to disclose their stock sales. That 2012 law is aimed at preventing them from cashing in on insider information. Eva? Oh, Rachel Scott for us. Thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this evening newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all enjoyed this evening edition of the Riley King newscast. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. They'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and bye everyone.